I know. That was that one one time of the year. Oh, hello everyone. I'm the one, the only Hobo Tom. Wait a second. What's the thing? This is what's this? Oh, that's right. Merry Christmas, everyone. You know it's that time of year again when 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 the mightiest Christmas sweater comes out. Because I don't know, it's a Christmas sweater because I think I found it and that I could use a Christmas sweater. Not necessarily an ugly sweater. It's just I don't know. It's actually kind of comfy. You really don't need sweaters here in Florida though. I'll just wear this. Nice, I don't know, collared t shirt or something. That's Christmas for me. Nothing special. In fact, you know what? I might try and wear the sweater. Ho, ho, ho. It'll be my Christmas sweater. Yeah, I've definitely worn worse to work. So, yeah, I'll wear my Christmas sweater to work. We'll see. Yeah, it can't hurt, I guess. What, are they going to fire me? If I wear a collared shirt underneath this, I'll be fine. Uh, oh, well. I'm sorry you guys heard that. I don't even know if you heard that. But wait a second. I'm getting way off base only because it's way too late. I am here to talk about some pro wrestling. Again, Merry Christmas, everyone. Uh, probably sometime tomorrow, I'll be putting up my very special Drunk Miss, Day, Drunk Miss Eve Christmas show for the Daytona Beach Bum Fight League. It's going to be a special show. It's going to feature four Elimination Chamber matches to determine a Christmas Day Challenger. So that's something new I've, I've worked on. And I'll get to that later. I might make the video to me. Or I don't know, I'll figure something out. I'm not, okay, enough of that stuff. It's time to talk about SmackDown. Um, I got to see clips of it. I, well, I actually did get to see the recap of it. And the after show. Or the kind of replay of it. On Saturday, I think. Or, sun, or actually late last night. Sorry, Sunday night. Because it is Monday, well... It's Christmas Eve! It's already drunk Christmas Eve already. Wow, I still have so much to do on that. Shoot. But, um, enough about my worries. Let's talk about some SmackDown. So again, SmackDown, I was working, so I had to catch the uh, second show. It, it was an interesting show. Um, it starts off with the recap of TLC. And we have nice, again, very much so like the ever dapper Hobo Tom. <laughs> A very dapper and clean cut Daniel Bryan. And this is the American Dragon version of Daniel Bryan, which is probably a pretty good version of Daniel Bryan. Him, if you ever want to see a good, fun Daniel Bryan match, watch him versus Juke and Thunder Lager. In fact, the more I'm wearing this, the more I do feel like wearing this to work. That's, that's weird. I don't know. We'll see. Can't be that bad, I guess. Do I have a Christmas shirt? No. I don't feel like wearing a Christmas tie either. Um, but we have clean cut Daniel Bryan coming up from him, and the myth comes out. Yeah, I don't like you, but I respect you. Uh, King Corman says, shut up, you two losers. Dolph Ziggler eventually come up, and they both beat up Daniel Bryan and the Miz, which is going to lead to a match. And then we have Heavy Machinery, the Christmas version of Heavy Machinery. I actually have them. In one of my earlier videos, uh, again, you can go back in my archive and see it. They actually gave out candy canes to people in the front row. My nephew's got not only the candy cane from Heavy Machinery, they got the candy cane box from Heavy Machinery, and they got the knuckle wraps from Montez Ford, I believe, of the Street Profits. Because they just came off, and all it was was just like tape. Uh, the one ring guy was cool about it. He's like, you really want this? And they're like, yes, yes, yes. Merry Christmas, kid. <laughs> it's not like it cost them anything. Well, I guess tape, but but they have plenty of tape, I guess. Um, and then, whoa, Mandy Rose gave Otis a ham for Christmas. 
Otis is getting some Christmas loving, folks. Unlike Hobo's mom. That's okay. Yeah, weird stuff would have happened. And I might not have this channel if I had my old girlfriend. You're like, no. But water under the bridge. So our first match is Heavy Machinery versus The Revival in the classic 34th Street Brawl. Uh, the Revival, they, they make fun. They make fun of Santa. Yeah, because there was a Santa in the ring. They make fun of Santa. You cannot boo Santa. Just ask Philly fan what happened when they booed Santa one day. It took them, um, yeah, I think oh, almost 30, like 30 years to win a Super Bowl. All because they booed Santa Claus. Dirty, disgusting, drunk, bastard Philly fan. Boo, Philly fan. We're doing a lot of booing today. That's weird. Uh, the revival again. They make Santa, oh, and then and then they make fun of the Santa outfits. Double boo. Heavy machinery is awesome, and then a heavy machinery event. And <laughs> they eventually do channel the bushwhackers. Oh, bushwhackers were fun. I think one time they were called the Chief Partners. Whereas the Bobby the Brainy Eden referred to them as like a New Zealand garbage man. Uh, uh, revival eventually again <laughs> they, they, they beat up Heavy Machine and they start shoving holiday food down poor Otis's, poor Otis's face that was funny and Otis went through a table oh I thought that was going to be the end of the match um, what else and then oh they found the bowling ball the bowling ball is the most devastating gift in all of professional wrestling. And the fact that the one tag team person, uh, Dawson, held down Tucker Knight, spread his legs, so so uh, Wilder could, of course, roll said bowling ball down the stage and go wonk. Yep. Bowling ball to the balls. That sounds terrible. It's painful too. Um, hopefully Tucker Knight moved his thigh in the way, so he didn't take the full brunt of that. They they know what they're doing. I hope. Uh, then of course the Christmas tree gets in the ring, and the ham gets dispatched to Otis's dismay. That upset Otis. They they started to beat Otis up with everything. He just no sold it. Otis up. Uh, dropped the caterpillar on one of them. I think the tree got involved. He threw the other uh, wilder, I think, into the tree. I just got the two of them confused. If you want to correct me, I was, I'm, I'm fine with that. Uh, then they have, and he actually hit uh, Dawson, just to be fair, or wilder, because I'm being, yeah, I'll say wilder, only to be consistent. He did an exploder suplex into the Christmas tree and gifts. That was fun. Then he pulled Legos besides thumbtacks and gummy bears and Jolly Ranchers. They're the most devastating weapon you can use. Uh, heavy Machinery does hit the compactor on Dawson, I guess. Well, they, they need to, like, put their names on their trunks or something. And then Heavy Machinery won. This was fun. I thoroughly enjoyed it. It's just so fun to see them having fun. This is a surf and turf match. And then we have uh, Still in Ring Revival say, we're sick of this. We don't want gimmick matches anymore. We want a good old-fashioned wrestling match. They kind of heal it up. Uh, Elias sings a song about the Revival. Yeah, whatever. And then backstage, oh, Otis shows what happened to the ham to Mandy Rose. Mandy, I'm sorry. I love your gift so much, but I'm sorry. And Mandy Rose made the mistake of giving sweaty Otis a hug. <laughs> and she got sweat stained all over. <laughs> that happened once. I'll tell you what, they, those wrestlers sweat a lot. I wanted to go, of course, high-five Otis. My whole hand was wet. 
I think I just rubbed it all over my nephew's shirt. He loved it. He got his he got Otis's sweat on him. I like to get Mandy Rose's sweat all over me. But that's a whole other issue. And then we have Sami Zayn. I guess he's the Secret Santa to Braun Strowman. I guess they had a Secret Santa thing, but I don't know. Uh, next match was Carmella versus Boo Sonya Deville. Carmella's actually a better face than she is heel. Normally it's the other way around. Uh, Boo Sonya Deville has that nasty running knee. Carmella has those kicks, though. Uh, eventually, this was a pretty quick match. Carmella hit the code of silence on Sonya Deville, and an MMA person taps to a pro wrestling move. I hope they bury Sonya Deville. Or what she did to my princess, Kimberly. And I have to make my princess, Kimberly. Oh, wow. I have so many people to make tomorrow. I have to make Lil Fettuccine Mojo. And now my princess, Kimberly. Wow. Not enough time. I don't know. We'll see. I, uh, there is enough time. I just have to wake up in the morning. Uh, so this was a fun match. Carmella wins. It's a ham sandwich of a match. Then the New Day come out for a match taking on Shinsuke Nakamura and Cesaro. Uh, Cesaro still doesn't look good in tights. I don't know. But so much heavy striking done by Shinsuke and Cesaro. Oh, Cesaro, I don't know if Cesaro ever, ever went to New Japan Pro Wrestling. I know he was in Chikara for a bit, Pro Wrestling Gorilla for a bit, Ring of Honor for a short stint. I just forget. Um, again, it was oh, Shinsuke Nakamura. He says he's, he's enjoying this because even though he's working more, there's less painful matches. Hey, I can see that. My one job, it's, it's short, but there's a lot to do. The other job is longer, but it's simpler. So, to all their own. Uh, Biggie eventually gets a hot tag, then begins to belly to belly suplex everyone. Uh, Sami Zayn, of course, acts as a distraction. Shinsuke Nakamura. Oh, that one knee he delivered. Ouch. That looks stiff. And then I'll tell you what, Cesaro can really. Actually, Shinsuke can actually sell that clothesline he got. He took from Biggie. He did like the flip over it. Uh, eventually, Kofi does the boom drop. Uh, and. Kind of. I think my only critique about this match is it's, it's very formulaic. Instead of having Xavier Woods take the beat down, they're having Kofi Kingston get the beat down. Biggie to make the save. I, I can understand it. The, the thing is, it's the same thing over and over and over and over again. So it gets kind of dull after a while. Um, eventually, again, it was a roll up one, too. I don't even think it was the SOS. But the. New day win in uh, a cheeseburger match. Then there was a beatdown because Sammy Zane gets involved, so it's three on two, and then and Braun Strowman comes in and cleans house. We'll see what happens with Braun Strowman. Um, maybe Braun Strowman will get an intercontinental title shot. It is the working man's title, so. He should get a shot. That would be a fair, fair, fair play, I guess, for that. Uh, Miz and Nalen Bryant. Uh, he, they were trading jibes, and, and you know they just wanted to laugh. I swear there was there was the, Daniel Bryan was holding back his laughter so much he was enjoying it. Then we got another match: uh, Bailey versus Dana Brooke. Dana Brooke's looking cuter and cuter all the time. I don't know. I, who should I have? Uh, I'll figure something out. Um, so we have Daly, uh, Bailey, Daly. We have Bailey versus Dana Brooke. 
I might be going to the Daily Center for New Year's Day for AEW. I'll keep you guys updated about that. Uh, Dana Brooke. Oh, she has. Her boobies got big or something. Uh, Bailey again. Again, definitely the heel with the knee strikes. Dana Brooke hit a sense on. Oh. And I'll tell you what. For some reason, some of those WWE women, those, those trunks are going, those those tights, those bikini bottoms are, are going lower and lower. They must have a really good waxer in the back or something. Someone want a hairy, fat bastard. They would use all the wax on me. <laughs> that wouldn't even be funny. Uh, eventually, Bailey does hit her old finisher. And eh. That was a weird power bomb. That's the only thing I have to say. Dan Brooks, again, ever since Sarah Logan, she had a program with Sarah Logan on, on main event. She's just been doing better and better, though. Um, Bailey eventually did win. Eh, a cheeseburger match. Cats in the Christmas spirit, at least. And then um, Sasha begins to beat up Dana Brooks, so it's a two-on-one. So that brings out Lacey Evans. Face Lacey Evans. Yes. Yes. Uh, we'll see. Um, it was a good basic wrestling match. And Sasha gets a super whack. I don't even know how that happened. I wonder, I wonder if that hurts. I know it hurts when they take it off. Down there, though. Even for women. I don't know. Uh, Sir Evans also has pretty good knees. Which is pretty good. And there was that one terrible knee. Oh. Looks like it hurt. Uh, eventually, Sasha takes it out to the outside. Starts mouthing with Lacey Evans' daughter, I guess. And I can only guess because I don't know. And then I guess the daughter really doesn't, doesn't do anything but like stare, stare daggers at her. I guess that angered Sasha Banks. She was, I guess she was told to get involved, plant. And that made Lacey Evans go absolutely bonkers. She started just to punch the snot out of poor Sasha Banks. A little better than that AEW creeper, but I, I'll tell you what, I didn't even notice it. It looked good enough for me if you if you're watching the whole thing. For AEW, people have been like bashing the shopper for being for, for, for not really hitting Dustin Reynolds. I'm like, well, he's not supposed to really hit Dustin Reynolds. And to to Dustin's credit, he was selling. Trust me, there's been much more egregious spots than that. So lay off the creeper. He's some local enhancement guy who was told to wear a mask, and he probably doesn't like wearing masks and clothes, and it, it does, he, he might not have felt comfortable. So I say, tranquilo. Uh, so this match was a double countout, a no contest. It's a ham sandwich. Then we get to the main event of the evening. We have The Miz and the American Dragon, Daniel Bryan, taking on Baron, Baron, or King, Baron, Corbin, and the show off himself, Dolph Ziggler. And wow, it starts off, of course, the heels jump, The Miz and Daniel Bryan, but it, they get their comeuppance because it goes into some, yes, kicks, yes, yes, yes. And then it got to the point where everything you can do, I can do better. I can do anything better than you. No, you can't. Yes, I can. Yes, I can. No, you can't. Um, between the Miz and Daniel Bryan, they just seem to be having fun. Again, this is the Daniel Bryan, the, the American Dragon Daniel Bryan. And, of course, when Dolph Ziggler, he has to do the heel thing. He drags Daniel Bryan's eyes across the ring rope. Heel tactics. Classic, though. I like that. 
Uh, then they did the uh, double team on Daniel Bryan. Daniel Bryan was probably having fun. Uh, again, you could see a little uh, four-second choke at the end of the tag. Classic stuff. Again, really good. Daniel Bryan. There's so much about him. He gets he gets most of the beating for some reason. Miz gets the hot tag, and he locked on that figure four. Whoa, way tighter than Ric Flair ever could. That actually looked near shoot legit. But that was a tight figure four. Dolph Ziggler has to tap out because Dan Bryan delivered the knee plus the Baron Corbin on, on the outside. Then you just hear the Fiends music. Let me in. Let me in. Let me in. What the this is Christmas time. Santa doesn't come knocking around here. Santa would get hot. This is Daytona Beach, folks. Most people here have guns and very mean dogs. So we had heard the Fiends music. And the weird, th you know the weird thing about this SmackDown? Oh, this match itself? It was a cheeseburger match. But I think the weird thing about this show, there were no men's singles matches. They have a good tag team division, and they have good thrown together tag team, but it was all tag team wrestling and women's matches. I know. Oh, I think no, that was that was this Monday. But I don't know. Maybe they're saving them for. Maybe they were just saving them for Monday. I don't know. We'll see. Overall, this was a fun show. It's just a good go home to Christmas show. It was a cheeseburger smackdown. And that was SmackDown. And now let's talk about some Monday Night Raw. Well, that's just my belt. I don't want the sword. Water has to last me. Again, if you're just joining me, this is a double, double, double episode. Only because I was working a lot this weekend. And so you just saw SmackDown. No, it's time for Raw. So Raw starts off pretty hot. Starts off with Mojo Rally. Oh, so good to see Mojo Rally. Big on Kevin Owens. Uh, Kevin Owens, they say, let's make this a no DQ match. I don't like the fact that you, you stunned me after you threw a steel pipe and I caught it. Don't catch a steel pipe. It's that simple. Uh, so Mojo Rally versus Kevin Owens starts off the match. Pretty hot start. Kevin Owens just tosses Mojo Rally around. And then Kevin Owens. He just throws everything in the ring. However, Mojo Rally, Kevin Owens threw a table in the ring. He never turned the table over, so it actually had the exposed legs, uh, slide, pivot joints, all, all, all the kind of hard hard metal stuff. Uh, Mojo Rally, I don't know if they price said, okay, yeah, just grill slam me on the table. He'd be like, okay. Uh, Kevin Owens did not probably turn that table over. Because I'll tell you what, Mojo Rally picked him up, gorilla slammed him, a little bit of umph, onto the bottom of the table. Ooh! That hurt. And Kevin Owens, I think he caught some of it on his face, because like, he did have a couple bruises and, and one pretty nasty mouse going. I forget if that was from his beating last week, though. So it might have been left over, but I'll tell you what, whatever happened, I think falling that the bottom of the table actually accentuated that. And then Mojo Rally just started going to town with chairs. Chair shots. So many chair shots. Uh, eventually, Kevin Owens does get control. He hit a stunner and a pop-up powerbomb onto a table after he set up the table. This was fun. It was different. Hey, Mojo Rally's back on TV. All Mojo Rally needs to do is wear his Zoom shorts and doesn't do his dick wiggle again. <laughs> that was terrible. <laughs> If you've seen pro wrestling, you know exactly what I'm talking about, folks. It was a fun enough match, though. It was a good cheeseburger match.
Then I'll have to make that stadium too. Oh wow, what's this? Four man representative. Oh, I'll figure this better. Yeah, it'll it'll be a good show. Um, so then we get so then of course Seth Rollins. I thought this was a good cheeseburger match, right? Oh no, I, I got distracted by something. And then Seth Rollins and the AOP comes out. Kevin's like, okay, let's just get it over with. Samoa Joe is so good. Samoa Joe, we're not worthy. We're not worthy. We're not worthy. Have you as our announcer. So good, Samoa Joe. So much gravitas. Um, eventually, the, uh, Seth does jump. Seth actually eats a super kick from Kevin Owens. He's like, I'm sick of this. AOP is too much. They beat up Kevin Owens. Then we have Akira, and then we have R Truth in Times Square because this took place in New York. I think it's Times Square. Uh, he's of course got an invitation to go see the Christmas tree. Akira is out, rolls him up, pins him. New twenty four seven champion. That's actually pretty fun, and it's a little bit different. So I shall say, even though it was way too short, it was fun though. And actually, it's good to see Akira is out actually have a belt. They're rewarding him. That was a ham sandwich. Then we had Cedric Alexander taking on the almighty Bobby Lashley with Lana at his side. Uh, I guess the SmackDown after Christmas or the tapings on Monday or tonight. I guess I don't know if they actually have Christmas off. Well, they do have Christmas, technically. I wonder what AEW is going to do Wednesday. We'll see. I. I, and Tuesday, tomorrow is going to be a double show anyway, so. Oh, wait. Yeah, I'll do that. Uh, I'll, I'll think of something. But then, you have Bobby Lashley taking on Cedric Alexander. Again, you have kind of the clash styles. You have strength versus speed. It's always good to see that difference of style. Uh, Cedric hit a moonsault and still hashing on the outside. That looked utterly amazing. Uh, whenever Cedric could keep the pace up, he did better. Whenever Lashley could actually pound him a little bit, makes sense. He would do better. And then Lana interrupts with something about um, uh, next week's WWE marriage. Lana's, Lana's so cringeworthy. Her boobies got smaller, too. I don't know. It just depends on the outfit. Uh, with that, that was that rough bump by Lashley. He was posing on the top. On the second rope, I'm sorry. Cedric Alexander like up kicked him in the back of the knees. He buckled, except for his legs stayed caught on that second rope. Ooh, that can't feel good for all the ligaments there, and the quadriceps. I could see, I could see a tear of something. That just didn't look good. Yeah, that's probably something they planned. They did it probably a thousand times and it worked. I'm roped so. I don't know. They have a mind of their own some days. Just as AJ Styles. Uh, with AJ Styles versus a top rope. One day I'll show that clip to, to everyone. I reference it. Jeez, I don't even know how often. Uh, with that, then there was, of course, the uh, devastating, the devastator move. Alexander got a quick combo right after that. Went for the pinfall. He, uh, Cedric Again, hubris, heals, hubris. Uh, but eventually, Cedric did eat the spear. One, two, three. Well, Bobby Lashley wins. This is a cheeseburger match. And then Seth Rollins gave another promo. Uh, then Zack Ryder versus taking on Drew McIntyre. I guess because Drew McIntyre beat up. Uh, uh, Kurt Hawkins last week is signed for Zach Ryder because it's beating. Um, Drew, for the most part, he just tossed Zach across, poor Zach Ryder across the ring, manhandled him. Zach Ryder did get a little bit of offense in, tried to go for the Rough Rider, 
uh, for the most part was a, was a little bit more was a little bit more than a squash match, not by much. Hey, back right there gives Offenson, Drew McIntyre hit at the Claymore, pinned him. Kurt Hawkins comes in the ring trying to save his buddy. Drew McIntyre gives him a future shock DDT for his effort. It says 2020 is going to be the year of Drew McIntyre. I hope it is because uh, this match, I could do that stuff. It's a ham sandwich. Then Becky Lynch comes out. Becky Lynch is looking tanner. I think there was one story where uh, Seth Rollins was talking about his engagement to Becky. And the only question Vince McMahon had to Seth Rollins about Becky is if she got tanned. So I'll tell you what, because she wears kind of that one piece or or two piece, but it's like a like a like a top and really close like to the bottom. So you really don't see a lot of Becky belly. It's Becky belly. Becky belly. She has a tummy on her. Ooh. Um, I think like the one time she did get her up there, like it was ghost white. Again, that good old Irish skin coming through for Becky Lynch. So I wonder if she did get tanner. Or if it's just like spray tan on the top. That would be weird though. Go home. You're like tan up here and like ghostly white everywhere else. Because they were the pantyhose. So they always have like tan looking smooth legs. That would be weird. Especially because she's hot. I could see like tan lines here. But not like tan lines all over. Oh, whatever. Uh, so Asuka comes out. Asuka two belts. She does her... Asuka's. When she speaks Japanese, Asuka, we're not worthy. We're not worthy. Asuka, we're not worthy. Then Alistair Black took on Dean Rusev? Russo? I don't know. Russo? Russell? I, I don't know. Jobber took three hits. It was a pinfall. This was a can of soup match. And then Buddy Murphy came out. Everyone's favorite Aussie. Everyone's favorite Aussie. Aussie, Aussie, Aussie. Oi, oi, oi. Aussie, Aussie. Oi, oi. Aussie, Aussie, Aussie. Oi, 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 oi. Uh, so Buddy Murphy comes out. Uh, he, uh, he took out some jobber again. Three moves. And it's over. Under a can of soup. And then Murphy and Alistair Black stare at each other. Can anything you can do, I can do better. I can do anything better than you. No, you can't. Yes, I can. Yes, I can. No, you can't. And then Alistair Black just took one kick, and that was the end of the lights out. And he just sat there and stared at Buddy Murphy. Probably some respect there, though. Then we had a Rey Mysterio promo. It was good. Uh, Tony Eason faced Ricochet. I'll tell you what. 205 Mania. 205 Mania. This was so fast. This was an amazingly fast patch. That fit. I love a fast-paced match. Especially for one Tony Nese, who's not necessarily known for having fast-paced matches. I was thoroughly shocked at this, that he could keep up that frenetic pace. It was so fast. Uh, nice. Nice could fly. He even pulled off an ASAE moonsault. Whoa! Acai Mutsu! That's a fun move. I wish I could do, do that. Except I'd probably kill myself. It's bad enough doing a normal moonsault off the top rope. Uh, ricochet again. The two of them back and forth. Fast, frenetic pace. Uh, ricochet did eventually hit the um, recoil. That's it. He doesn't do the 630 anymore, which I wonder if he saves that for big matches. But I'll tell you what, this was a fun frenetic pace. This is a cheeseburger match. And then Charlotte Flair. Woo! Yeah, Charlotte Flair is also getting those those um uh, uh, lowered bottoms. Except for it doesn't... Oh, it looked pretty good on Charlotte Flair. 
I don't know, Charlotte. I think Charlotte Flair's. He got a little bit softer in the tummy area. She makes it work. So having that six pack abs does absolutely nothing for women. You want to have a nice. You don't want. You don't want to be. Let's see, I don't even know how to do this. Yeah, if you're looking at this, you don't want to be bump, 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 bump. No. Smooth. 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 Dr. Smooth. Randling. Yes, go watch Dr. Smooth and Randling videos about Transformers. They're fun. Um, Charlotte Flair is taking on Chelsea Green. Chelsea Green's back from a knee injury. And they're calling up random people from NXT to be jobbers. Ooh. Uh, Chelsea Green came out. <laughs> she, she nailed Flair with a nasty knee to the face, too. After that, it looked like Charlotte Flair had enough of that. It was, whoo! Chops time. The big boot, the figure eight. This was quick. I'll give it this much. At least it's different, and they're utilizing all their female talent because that's where WWE's strength is right now. Their female talent. So this was eh, a ham sandwich of a match. And then back in the streets of New York City, Santa pins Akira Tozawa after telling him about the spirit of Christmas. Santa is a new 24-7 champion? Whoa. That was interesting. That's definitely a ham sandwich of a match. So I'm smart. I'm not like stupid drunk Philly fan. I'm never going to give Santa a can of soup. Boo, Philly fan. Dirty, drunk, disgust, disgusting, bastard, filthy, Philly fan. Boo, Philly fan. Then we had uh, Randy Orton and the Viking Raiders taking on the club for life. It's too sweet, me bro. Uh, so with this, poor Carl Anderson gets destroyed. Um, there was great isolation by the Viking Raiders on Carl Anderson. Until the Gallus gets in, he hit that big kick. And that, sir, is a big boot coming at your head. Um, AJ, again, sneaky when they get, I think it was Ivar in the corner. AJ just started to plainly choke him. And then AJ tags himself in, chokes him some more. Good heel tactics by AJ. And AJ Styles went all New Japan pro wrestling style AJ Styles the way he should. Um, Orin eventually got the hot tag. Uh, and then... He just sort of RKO everyone for a while. Um, he did get nailed by Gallows, but poor old Carl Anderson. And uh oh those Viking Raiders. Carl Anderson ate the Viking experience, and fortunately that wasn't the end of the match. After that, I'm like, Good, the club's winning. They, they actually deserve that. <sighs> so this was a, a fun... Uh, AJ Styles hit the phenomenal forearm. It's good to see him use that. AJ Styles wins his battle with the top rope. Again, Randy Orton's really selling the knee of the Viking Raiders. They still look strong. I mean, it takes so much to beat them, though. It takes the club and AJ. So they're losing... They're doing so with purpose, and we'll see if this leads to something for the Royal Rumble, which will be in January, I think. I think. Um, so, so the club wins. Finally, we get our surf and turf match. Actually, this was kind of the match of the night. And then, back in the streets of New York, you have a carriage chase going on. Not necessarily the quickest thing happening. Uh, Eric Rowan talks to the cage. I still say it's a skunk. That's my vote. Skunk. In the cage. And the Street Profits are back to being the chorus for WWE. And Rowan takes on Travis something. Um... Uh, uh, Travis Corn, Travis Corn. I like. A lot of people don't like what they're doing with Rowan. I like it only because they're getting creative. 
I have no idea what they're going to do for New Year's Eve, but it's going to be something fun. Because um, Travis Corn had a whole bunch of candy. <laughs> I might not want to eat them, but he had a whole bunch of candy canes. And he offered a candy cane to Rowan. And Rowan seemed kind of confused, but yet happy and infused with the holiday spirit. He accepted said candy cane. And then Travis Corn, I guess, went to go distribute more candy canes. And he tried to put a candy cane in the cage. It's creative. I will give him that. That's good create that's good use of creativity. That's Travis Corn. Eventually he does get destroyed though with the fun splash and the iron claw slam slam. Doesn't matter. It's something somewhat different. It was entertaining. It pertained to the holiday spirit. This is a ham sandwich with squash match. And then back in the streets of New York, Ruff gets tired of chasing. Like, listen, I've chased you two around. Our truth you're the 24-7 champion. I'm leaving. I want to celebrate Christmas with my family. And our truth and the to share a fuzzy, warm Christmas moment. Uh, Rusev comes out, takes on Noe Jose. Rusev has a couple of words. Noe Jose uh, gets like two hits in. Rusev, Masha kicks him. I think that's all you just like kicked him a lot. Eventually, Rusev gets the win. Eh, it, so no way Jose is kind of being the job for the stars. It was okay. It's a ham sandwich of a match. But then Rusev does the spin Rudy. He gets invited to dance his way out of the ring by no way Jose. And because Rusev won, he was allowed to leave the Kong line. And now we're having fun Bachelor Rusev. That could be interesting. And then our main event of the evening. In this corner, we have the challenger from somewhere in the middle of Cornfield, Iowa. Seth Rollins. Of course, being escorted by the authors of Pain. And because we have the architect of Pain. From some cornfield in Iowa, Seth Rollins taking on the masked man from Mexico, from Baja California, Rey Mysterio Jr. for the U.S. title. And this was great. Uh, Ray goes right after Seth Rollins. Seth gets beat up a lot. However, Seth, being a heel, changes the strategy a lot. Now he's a heavy striker. Uh, Ray Mysterio does hit the victory roll onto Seth Rollins. He, he tried to do the sliding um, thing, but then falls right the feet of Authors of Pain. Authors of Pain just kind of stand there most of the match. They do look very intimidating, though. They don't even cross their arms. They're just like there. No emotion. That's pretty cool. Uh, eventually, Ray does a sliding barricade bomb. That looks amazing. Ray has Ray found some Ray, Ray found some gold and found that diamond in the rough with that because that kind of revitalized the whole move set. Uh, Seth says, "You know what? You do that to me, I'll hit you with a buckle bomb." Um, however, uh, Ray Mysterio did his six or nine, and then Officer of Pain got Seth DQ'd because Ray Mysterio is going to go up top and go flying, and that's when AOP pushed him and got in the ring, started beating him up. It was actually a pretty good match. I just don't like the ending. I do I do like the ending of the show, so therefore I shall give this a surf and turf rating. But eventually they go beat up Ray some more, take him up the stage. All the announcers go off except for Samoa Joe. He's like, I'm staying right here at my spot because this is where I'm supposed to be. Moa Joe versus any author of pain. That's good stuff. Moa Joe, again, he stands his ground. He gets beat up and put through a table for his efforts. But Moa Joe, we're not worthy. Not worthy. We're not worthy. And that was, that was actually a fairly fun Raw. Um, overall, I think on the strength of the back end of it, 
I'll say that's a cheeseburger wrong. So tomorrow, the rest of the week, tomorrow I'm going to do a double video. Um, I'm going to see if I might actually live stream this. Let's see how I, f yeah, I'll probably will live stream this. Um, tomorrow's going to be a double video because one, the first video, actually, actually the, probably the one you'll see first, probably be about between eight and 10. I'll be my, it should, it, it, uh, impact wrestling. I haven't done live impact wrestling in a while. I like live streaming them for some reason. Why don't they let me live stream them? They're not as crazy. And I think towards the end, I'll also give my NWA power review. Yeah, I should be able to do, should be able to do that. Uh, we'll, we'll see. If not, my NWA power review gets gets bumped back till Friday. That's okay. Or Saturday. I hope. Also, I'm in the second video. Because tomorrow is, well, today, tomorrow, and, well, once the sun comes up, it's going to be Drunk Miss E. Yes! Not quite the elitist, but we're, we're approaching the time of Drunk Miss, folks. And therefore, we're going to have the Daytona Beach Bum Fight League here on the Hobo and Girlfriend channel. And there are going to be... Ooh. Five quality matches. The first match, of course, because it's a gimmick match. And just... A dr <laughs> and, and I don't even know why I did this. The no DQ match, Corporate Tom takes on Santa Claus. And then you're going to have, an, a, a, from the Daytona Ocean Center, you have a five man battle royal, or you have a five man, I'm sorry, elimination chamber match, or a six man elimination chamber match for the challenger for the Under the Bridge Championship. An Elimination Chamber match for the Always Underweight Championship. A Women's Elimination Chamber match to see the number one contender for the Best Girlfriend Ever Belt. Bestest Girlfriend Ever Belt. And then we're going to have a representative six-man tag team representation match and the Elimination Chamber for the Entry Continental Lucha Libre Tag Team Titles. So that should be pretty good. Again, tomorrow I'm going to be featuring two new wrestlers. Uh, I still have to make you guys, but I have the ideas in my head. Little Fettuccini, you are now a wrestler here in the Daytona Beach Bump Fight League. And also, Mojo, you two have earned a spot probably in the always underweight category. And who knows, there might... Spoiler alert. There's a new tag team in town. We'll see what happens then. And everyone... Merry Drunk...